All right, so I know a lot of my subscribers have found me through woodworking, but I actually always intended to do uh, multiple different mediums on this channel, and one of them is metal. I've always loved metal. I've actually worked with it longer than wood. And today I'm gonna show you how to etch copper, make some custom name badges and stuff like that. Um, and the process that we're gonna be using is electrolytic copper etching compared to like an acid etch. Um, it's really a neat process, and it's a lot cleaner than acid etching. You don't have a crazy chemical to get rid of afterwards. And uh, it's something I've always wanted to do and I've played around with a little bit, and now I'm uh, showing you guys. So stick around and see how it's done. All right, so the first thing we need to look at is the solution. So this is called electrolytic copper etching, which means we need to use an electrolyte solution to perform the etch. Um, the solution we're gonna be using is called copper sulfate, and you basically dissolve these blue copper sulfate crystals into distilled water. I've also used non-distilled water, and I think it worked just fine. So, where did I buy it? I actually bought this at the hardware store. And the thing with it is, is not every county and state allows it. Um, it's banned in some counties and states, so I actually had to go to the next county over to get it. Uh, that said, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, and so if you're an Amazon shopper, probably gonna be easier for you that way. This is what it looks like. Um, after you dissolve it into water, that is what's going to help perform the etch. That's the electrolyte solution. Okay, so now we need to worry about getting the design onto the metal. Now, th what that's called in etching terms is it's called a resist. So the resist is exactly what it sounds like, which is um, something you apply to the metal in the areas where you don't want the etch to affect the metal. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, the way I'm going to use this time is with cut vinyl. So I made this on my little uh, silhouette vinyl cutter there, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now we got to mark out our metal to, to cut it down to fit in the etch bath. So we have this design here, and you see I've actually done some samples, so this part is already cut in the right way. So we're just going to take a sharpie here, mark a little reference mark. We're going to go a little smaller than this because we want it to wrap over the edges. I'm going to go over to the porta band here and get this cut out. All right, so now that our metal's cut, the next step is to clean it. Um, the best cleaner I've actually found for this particular process is um, Dawn dish soap, funny enough. I've used it a lot for small metals projects and it works great. It's got a mild degreaser in it and it's not too caustic, toxic, um, and it works pretty well. All right, so before we get the vinyl going, I'm just gonna prep this. So I have a piece of aluminum wire here and I'm just gonna bend a loop. You don't need special pliers for this if you don't have them, but I have them, so I'm gonna use them. And these are actually just round nose pliers. They have a little notch for a special purpose, but these are actually jewelry pliers. And they're kind of cool because A, they're round, if you need to bend stuff into circles, and they're also nice because they don't have teeth like most pliers you buy at the hardware store. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is this is gonna go flat on the back, so it gives us a lot of surface area around um, gives us a lot of surface area between the electricity and the copper. We want good contact there. All right, so I've determined that this is going to be our top, and so we are going to go ahead and put our vinyl on. Now, we want to make sure our vinyl sticks to the transfer paper as good as possible. I'm going to go ahead and peel this up carefully. Especially with fine details like this, you do got to be a little bit careful, but if you have your vinyl cutter dialed in right, you shouldn't have too much troubles. Now the one thing I found in experiments is leaving the metal flat on a paper towel, which I do to keep it clean, and then putting the vinyl down onto it, obviously not a real great idea because the edges tend to stick. So what we're going to do instead, is we're going to start this up here and push it down. And then Go ahead and flip it over. We really, really want to make sure that the vinyl is pushed down onto the metal really, really good. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and peel up the transfer tape. I did purposely leave an overhang on the vinyl. And that is so that it can wrap over the edges because you really don't want any copper showing. You don't want any copper showing except for the area you want to etch. A pretty good start here. You can see there's some kind of air bubbles there. The ones that are in this large black field here, not a huge deal, but you definitely want to take care of them on the design itself. Like here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's one right there. So we're going to try to push that out the best we can. Those bubbles are another reason why you want to make sure your metal is super clean because it can also be caused by dirt. And some of these might actually be caused a little bit by dirt. So we want to make sure this is good and as adhered as possible. It's probably lint from the paper towel. Okay, so now we're going to get around to attaching our back piece here. So this is what we're going to use as our electrode, kind of. So, you can, there, there are, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. One way is with packing tape, I've done that for sure. Um, the other way is using vinyl. So what we're trying to do here is cover the remainder of the exposed copper on the back. We want just the wire poking through this vinyl and the rest is ideally covered. As best as we can. And seal kind of back around it. Again, not, not going to be totally perfect, but as long as the majority of it's there. All right, so with that, we are ready to go. Okay, so what do we have here? First, we have a variable DC power supply, and we have a stainless steel tray. This I actually got at Smart and Final under like the restaurant supply section. And then we have these little foam squares. This is just little, I don't know, 3 16th inch craft foam, and I cut it up into little pieces, and then you cut a little slot in it, and you'll see how that works here in just a second. Oh, and then we have, of course, our Solution. This is our copper sulfate solution. Now, you'll notice in the bottom of this pen, play the light on it, you can see the copper in there. So what happens is, the positive gets attached to our workpiece, and the negative gets attached to the steel pan, and electricity flows from positive to negative, and in so doing, it takes, in this solution anyways, it takes bits of the copper with it and goes from the positive, which is our workpiece, to the negative, which is this pan here. And this is kind of nice, and this is where it differs from acid etching, is that the metal still kind of stays a solid and coats, you're essentially almost kind of plating this stainless steel pan. And this is what allows this to be a much more green process compared to acid etching. In acid etching, you have the copper get suspended in the etching solution, and there it becomes um, metal-bearing toxic waste. So. This is actually meant to be poured down drains, and once you're done etching, you can keep reusing this as much as you want compared to the acid etching, which eventually has so much, um, so much metal dissolved into it that it no longer works. There are ways to refresh it and all that kind of stuff, but generally speaking, that, is, that has a finite life where this stuff, with exception to evaporation, you can just keep using and using and using. That's why that jar of blue crystals will last you a good long while. All right, we put our pretty blue solution in the pan. 
now we have our design, which we made previously. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put these little foam guys on the corners. Now you see when I put it on the corner, it, let's see if I get that a good view, it keeps, it's going to keep the metal piece from making contact with the bottom. It's going to keep a space between them so that there's room for the metal to flow from the workpiece down to the pan. So we put these on all four corners. Again, this is another thing that's very, very reusable. I bought one sheet of craft foam when I've done this. I've done the etching about five times and I haven't even used, you know, I've used the same corners the whole time. So, all right. So then we're gonna put this into our solution. I try to put it in kind of at an angle like this to hopefully let any bubbles that wanna come up and crud and stuff like that, try to float up the surface. I don't know if that helps, but that's just kind of what I do. So now, before we flip the power on, we're going to attach the leads. So the positive lead, remember? Remember the positive lead goes to our workpiece, which is the silver wire coming up from it. And our black lead, which is our negative lead, it goes to the pan. Now again, always keep the power off when you're attaching and, and removing the leads, just as a good practice so you don't accidentally electrocute yourself. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the power supply now. I'll have links for this stuff on my website, which is linked down in the description below. All right, so right now we're gonna put it at five volts. I have the amperage set to max out at five amps. It won't go that high. Um, the amperage actually varies a bit depending on the size of the workpiece and, is, and how much copper is exposed. Also, it varies with the voltage. Um, I've played with different voltages from three volts up to 12 volts. And I found that by far five volts gave me the best results. So that's what I've been doing. So after examining this piece, well, it wasn't ultimately successful. The C and the W are actually very, very well defined. Probably the best I've seen in all my experiments. They looked really, really good. Um, but the border here, that fell off partially through the etch, and you can kind of tell that in the physical piece because it is not as high as the C and the W, which the vinyl stayed intact the whole time. Um, so that's unfortunate. Um, like I said, it, it's actually really a positive sign that the C and the W are so crisp, but overall this piece is, I would say, a failure. Um, you also see how uneven the texture is here, or the surface is, in the negative field there. Just not very good. I'm trying to play this in the light and give you guys a good view of how that is. So, good practice run, but that's unfortunately the thing that happens with etching sometimes. It doesn't turn out perfect, especially when you're using the vinyl, I feel. Um, so I'll try it again. Stick around and hopefully I have a good piece to show you at the end. All right, so it's a couple of days after I shot the last stuff and I came out and I did another sample. Uh, this time I cleaned the metal really well with Dawn dish detergent and uh, tried it again. So it's still not perfect, but it came out a lot better. Um, the letters came out just as good as they did last time, which is almost perfect. Um, and the border, which is what had a problem last time, came out better. It, the um, vinyl still failed partway through the etch. Um, I can tell because it's not quite as tall as the letters, but it's well-defined enough that I think I'm gonna be able to use this for what I want, which is to um, paint the lower surface and then sand the top so you see the brass with the black background. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get going on that now.